I guess this represents the halfway mark after we finish this section here because exam three out of six. Um, and today's topic is direction fields and Euler's method. Okay, so let's start with direction fields first. And I think that probably the best thing is to do an example of, of a direction field. And let's go, I'll just go to the homework. Okay, these right here are our direction fields. Now, um, the way that it works is, maybe I'll go back to the first page. Maybe the way that it works is you see these little line segments everywhere, these little line segments all over the place, or it kind of looks like metal when you put a magnet below it or something. Um, those are, those represent slopes. Okay. So let me just like review a little bit slopes. So if you have, So I'm, I'm basically going to say, okay, so if the slope is zero, then that's represented by a horizontal line segment like that. If the slope is one, then that's represented with a line segment that's going up like that. If it's negative one, then it's represented with a little line segment that goes down like that. If it's if it's two, then you know you're slow, you're steeper. If it's negative two, then you're steeper going downward. Okay, so you just kind of have to estimate what these things are okay so that's that's basically what it is and um so let's take a look at this one right here and what you do is we'll test a few points here now the slope is going to be the derivative Like that. Okay, so um, you just choose points that are going to be easy to plug into here. So let's say zero, zero. That seems seems to be easy. So if x and y are both zero, then this becomes negative one. Okay, so you identify where that point is. It's at the origin, and this is the correct slope. This is, let's see, where is this? Oh, right here. This is not the correct slope. This is not the correct slope. This has it, this, this, this is, um, this is like a slope too, it looks like. So that's wrong. So this whole graph's wrong. Here, this looks like a horizontal, this like, looks like slope zero. So that's wrong. And this one, dang, this also looks, this looks, also looks like slope zero. So that's, that's off too. So really don't at that point, you know, just looking at this one point, that's this is the only one that it could be. If you you can choose other points if you want. So let's say you choose um let's say we had uh one zero, for example. Okay, so that would be that would be one and that'd be zero. So that'd be two minus one, that'd be one. Okay. And so you go to the point one zero, which is right here. And that does look like that does look like the slope is one because it's like it's going like it's going like this. Okay, so you see this kind of line segment right there, um, whereas right here you see this kind of line segment, right? At that point. Um, another thing you could do is. You could set that equal to zero, and kind of and see where that leads. Okay, so if you distribute the two, that's two x plus two y equals one, and so two y would be negative two x plus one, or y equals negative x plus one half. So everywhere here, it's going to have slope zero, and that would be. Um, it looks like. Okay, right there, that point there, and then going down like that. So let like all of these point, all of these um, you can see that along this line here, all the slopes are zero. Okay, so the slopes are zero, so that you can kind of see that they're all just little horizontal line segments there. 
Okay, so anyways, yeah, of course, this is the answer right here. This one right here is the answer. And ooh, let me bring my thing up just a second. And then if you come down here, it says um, on this line, y, y equals negative x plus one half, the derivative is zero. Okay, so that's basically what what this says right here on this line right here. And then these other two don't make any sense. Um, and then it's negative one on the line y equals negative x. Because when y is negative x, then this whole part goes away and you just have negative one. So yeah, that makes sense as well. So this is the answer right there. And the thing that makes this um, interesting or makes this useful is that based on, like if, if you were to start right here, for example, like, like based on your initial condition, you can kind of follow the cur what happens. You can kind of see that these, these lines are going like this, right? And then they're maybe just going down a little bit. Something like that. So like if you had that one, if you if you started there, then your path might look something like that. Just kind of going with the flow of the lines. Whereas if you were to start somewhere like right here, for example, then it might go up like that. And then but then coming back this way, it's kind of leveling out. So you might get a curve like that. Or if you start right here, then it might be like this. And just following the, the, the um, just following where the lines are taking us. Okay. Okay. So let's move on um, to the next exercise. Here we have um, y equals sine three x sine three y. And we're supposed to identify which of the which of these is the slope field. So we, if we want, we can set that equal to zero. And of course, that's going to be zero whenever x equals zero or y equals zero. Okay. And so then, on all those spots, we're going to have a slope like that. And you can see that this one, it does appear, all the slopes appear to be horizontal along the y-axis and along the x-axis. And here, these are, these are, um, these are sloped downwards. So the slope is negative. So this is not going to work. Okay. Just based on all these slopes are, are messed up, even, you know, but you need all of them to be, to be like this, all of them to be horizontal line segments. This one, that looks like okay. That looks okay as well. This one, oh, zero's down. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. This does not look okay. Because zero's down here. And so these are not slope one. So they're, that's wrong. And then the same thing with this one. These are not slope one either. And neither are these. This is right here. But you need everything to be like that. So that's not going to be the answer either. So for this um, exercise number two, this is the only one that it could be. Okay, now as far as this explanation, give reasons. Um, okay, basically what I just said right here was that when x is zero or y is zero, then the slope is zero. And also, Not on that one y equals when y equals three, it just doesn't make that zero. So that, that's off. And then let's see here. Y prime is greater than zero for x is between zero and three pi. Yeah, that's true. Because when x is between zero and um, pi over three, 
That means that three X is between zero and pi, which means that sine of three uh, X is positive. Okay, so this third answer is the correct one here. And again, you could play around with this and kind of look at, see what happens. So let's say you were to start right here, then that's a horizontal line. You can go out horizontally, but you see now these lines are sloped up. So then it's gonna start sloping up. But then it slopes kind of, the, the slope is becoming less. And then they're flat here. So it looks like it's gonna go like that. And then you could follow back the other way. And kind of get the same thing. This line up here looks like it might be an asymptote or be close to it being asymptote. The same thing if the uh, if you start down here, then let's say you start right here, then it would come up like that. Looks like it levels off and then comes over and then um, does this sort of the same thing. So those are the two potential things. And then if you started right here in the middle, if you started right here, then that was just gonna be straight across. Okay, so these represent different solutions to this differential equation, by the way. Okay, these, the, these three curves represent different solutions to this differential equation based on where you start from. You know, you're gonna get different things. Okay, number three is um, this one right here. Y equals, Y prime equals Y minus two X. That's the slope is equal to Y minus two X. So, um, and it says sketch a solution curve that passes through this point right here through the point one zero. So it's gonna go through that point one zero I guess all these curves do that, so they're all, so we can't disqualify any of them based on that alone. But let's um, let's start putting points in. Okay, which will give us some. Um, what which will give us the slope representation. We can start with the point one zero, which is because that's where we're going through. And when X is one and Y is zero, we have zero minus two. So that's negative two. So that means that it's gonna look kind of like this, kind of a steep slope going down, which is negative two. Okay, so this one looks okay. That one's not okay, because that's going up. And that one's going up too, so that's not okay. So I throw those two out. This one's also, this one's going down, so this looks, this looks okay. And then we can choose another point where these are different. So let's see, what would that, what would be a good point to choose? Hmm. Maybe some point over down here, maybe a negative one, because these are sloped downwards while well, these are sloped upwards, right? Okay, so let's go for, let's go for zero, negative one. Okay, so if, if X is zero and Y is negative one, then Y prime will be negative one. So that's gonna be sloped downwards like that. And these are sloped upwards, so that doesn't work. This one right here is these are these are do appear to be sloped upwards. So, um, yeah. So that that does appear to work. So it looks like it's wait wait no that's I already disqualified that graph. Okay, which is which one's still working? Uh, okay, here they're sloped upwards, so that this is negative one, so that's not going to work. Here they're sloped downwards, so this one does work, does seem to work. So it's got to be the second one. 
Hey, is it always the second one when we do these multiple choice things? Oh, well. And then, um, so yeah, this is just one curve. We're just kind of following the, these little line segments here, which represent the slopes. I mean, you could draw other ones as well. So there's, there's that one right there. This looks like it's pretty, looks like that would just go like that. Um, if we were right here, then maybe it would come like this. So uh, different curves, it would represent different solutions. Okay, so that is, um, Direction fields, the first topic, direction fields. If, have you ever, has any guys ever seen that movie um, where it was about NASA and they had those, uh, minority women that were doing the calculations. They would like do calculations for the other other people. Have you guys seen that movie? No, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. Okay, so there's one part of the movie where one of the women refers to, she says something like, let's use Euler's method, okay? And, um, yeah, that, that sort of is, this is kind of what you, you use, but you, but for that kind of situation where you're dealing with, um, where, where essentially what happens is you have a situation, like let's say planetary movement, movement of the, of the planets, um, you really can't find a, an equation that describes, describes it. Um, if you just, if you only had, if you could, if you could say the sun is completely stationary, or even if you said, okay, if, 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 it, if it was only the sun and one planet and there were no other planets or moons or anything in the solar system, then you could probably come up with an equation that, um, that, that describes the, motion of the planet and the motion of the sun. Okay, you could probably do that. But because there's like more than two bodies in the solar system, there's there's a few planets. And then also with like sending um, sending a spaceship to the moon, you have the gravity of the earth, you've got the gravity of the moon, you've got the gravity of the sun that even plays in a little bit. Um, and all kinds of forces that are that are deal that you're dealing with. Okay, and so for a situation like that, you use something like Weather's method, which is a this is kind of an iterative thing where you know your position right now and you can calculate where you'll be, let's say one second from now. And then based on that, you can based on that you can calculate what you uh, will be one second after that, based on where you are one second from now, which includes the velocity and all these other things. And you can like do iterations and um, come up with that. Now, Euler's method is used for solving differential equations, which are kind of what you're dealing with when you're in that kind of situation. Um, but it, it's it's pretty much the most basic one. So I'm sure that by then they would have been using much more advanced methods, uh, probably runge kata, which is much more advanced and will get you results much quicker. But this, we always start off with with Euler's method just because it's it's good for learning the technique. And essentially what you have is this function f is the derivative, okay? F y prime is equal to capital F of x, y. Okay, that's the kind of situation that you have, 
Okay, so like if we look at the exercises, for example, this one right here, then this right here would be for this situation, this is our f of x, y, which is the, the derivative. And um, the thing about it is that the derivative represents is the slope at that particular pair of points. So the idea is this. Let's say we start at an x0. And you're given an initial condition. You're given an initial condition like this. Okay. So if that's if this is um if this is x0 right here and this is y0, then we know that our solution starts at that point. Okay. So it's kind of like so it's kind of like you have a direction field here. This is like this is the general idea. You start at a particular point. And then you just kind of like figure out the rest. You can like kind of just sketch the rest based on the slope. Okay. Okay. But so here's how it works. Um, the idea, the general, the basic idea, your goal is to find y of x sub n. Okay, so we'll put x sub n over here. We want to know where that is. What what value do we get way over here? Okay, and the way to do that is you partition the interval up like this. So x one we're given this way. So x1 is x0 plus h. So you choose a value of h and you divide it up into equal, you divide it up into subintervals each of length h. Okay. So this distance here from x1 to, from x0 to x1 is h. This distance from x1 to x2 is also h. So that's how that works. Okay, so x1 is x0 plus h, x2 is x1 plus h, and so on. That's what this formula here is. Now, what it's saying is that if we know the slope right here, if we know the slope right there, let's say the slope is one. Okay, and we just and we can plug the we, the idea is that you can plug x0 and y0 in for x and y in here, and that gives you the slope, right? You can just plug those values in, that gets you the slope. If that slope is, let's say, 1, then we come over here, and this right here will be our estimate for, this right here will be our estimate for, um, for where we are at, at when we're at x, x1. So, in other words, y sub and the way that you calculate it is this. Okay, so y sub one, let me write, let me do it in a different color. Uh, uh. Okay, so y sub one is equal to y sub zero plus h times f of x zero, y zero. Like that. And this is, which is approximately y of x one. Okay, so if you actually if you actually have the actual curve, then using the slope there, then you, you use it to get to the next point right here, and that should be close to to y the actual y the actual solution is y of x one, and then from there you find the slope right here, maybe it's that, and then and you just kind of point in that direction, and that gets you the next point. Okay, so you just apply that formula right here. So y2 is y1 plus h times f of x1, y1. Okay, and then just use that to get the next point and so on until you get to the end here. And then that's your estimate. So that's essentially how it works. Now, let's go, let's do this exercise right here.
and it says use step size 0.2. So that means H is 0 0.2. And we're supposed to estimate Y of one and they give us Y of zero, okay? So here is what's going on. Okay, so here's zero. Y of zero is one. So here's here's one. So we know that the curve is gonna go through that point, this point here. And we want to know what happens when we get all the way over here to one. I put one way over here. And we have a step size of 0.2, which means that we start, if we're starting at zero, then we're coming here, then X1 will be 0.2 or 0 0.2. X2 will be 0 0.4 and X3 will be 0 0.6 and then 0 0.8 and then one. And um, let me erase that. Okay, and so we wanna know, essentially, we start here and we apply Euler's method one, two, three, four, five times on the fifth iteration, then um, that's gonna be our estimate. All right, so, so we know that Y of zero is one and we're going to apply this right here to get to here and this is our f of x right f of x y right here it's x squared y minus one half y squared okay now i'm going to do this using excel so so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say H is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.02. OK, that was the H that we were supposed to use. No, not 0 0.02, just 0 0.2. Okay, now next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make um, a column for Xn and a column for Yn, and then a column for um, No, not that. I'm gonna make a column for N and a column for xn and a column for yn. Okay, we know, and and then we start with zero and we're gonna go, um, that's gonna be five, five step sizes. Okay, and then xn, we start with zero, we start with zero. We know that y, x of, that y of zero is one. So we're gonna put that as a one. Okay, here I'm going to go make that B3 plus uh, B. Now, if I put a dollar sign, then it's going to fix that on, then it's going to fix, it's automatically going to go here. But if I leave it without a dollar sign, then this B3 is going to choose the one above it. So if I drag that down, then um, here it's adding B4 plus B1. Here it's adding B5 plus B1 and so on. Okay, so the dollar sign kind of fixes that. Okay, for here, I'm going to put the equation for Euler's method. So equals the previous value, which is the C3 plus, okay, and then the formula was H times F of the previous values, okay? So we know that the H is the B1. So I put the number sign there to fix that on that times, and then the F was X squared Y. So that's B3 squared times C3, because B3 is X and C3 is Y. So that's X squared Y minus, and then one half, so I'm just going to put that as 0.5 times, and then y squared, so c3 squared. OK, 
Okay, so that's what that would be. And then um, if I drag that down, then this last value is the estimate. Okay, so point, so 0 0.8183, 8183. So four decimal places. Okay, so 0 0.8183. Okay, that would be the answer. I'll go ahead and um, come back to here. So um, from Excel. The estimate was 0 0.8183. Round it to four decimal places. Okay, um, any questions on that? Okay, let's move on. Number five. This one has a lot of parts to it. So um, here's the formulas for uh, Euler's equation. Here's an, um, for Euler's method. Here's the differential equation. Now, this one, we need to work with this a little bit. So let's solve for dy dx. That's going to be 3x squared minus 3x squared y. Okay. So this is this right here is our um, capital F of X, Y. And that's what we'll be using in the, when we, use, when we go to Excel. Okay, now they want us to do Euler's method and they want us to estimate Y of one with different step sizes. So the first one is just a step size of one. And I suppose that we could just calculate that one by hand because it's only one calculation because to go from to go from zero to one, it's just one step gets you there. Okay, so we could just it's just one calculation. So, and the estimate would be the previous value of y, which is uh, one. Okay, this is basically telling you that y zero is uh, four. And x zero is zero, so that would be. So this would be so y one would be y zero plus, and then h is one. But I'll put that I'll put that in there. F of x zero y zero. In this case, that's what it's going to be. Okay, so y zero is four plus, and then h was one times f of x zero, f of, uh, what is this, this is zero and that's four. So plug zero and four in here. So three I a, times. I have a quick zero. question. Why yeah. is why is y is zero four and, and not six? Should it, should it be six? Yeah, it should be six. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Good, it's six. So it doesn't make much difference, but um, that turns out to be, oh wait, all that goes away because there's, too many zeros there's a zero x is zero so it just wipes that all out and you just get a four okay so the first answer is just going to be four no six ah i'm plagued by what is this disease where where you replace sixes with with fours okay so it's going to be six Okay, for so the next one, um, let's go ahead and do the next one using Excel. So for these ones, we're all gonna um, we're gonna switch over to Excel. So we have 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to another tab. And my first value of H was 0.1. And I have space for N, XN, and YN. 
And I know that our initial value was of x is zero and y is uh, six. And of course, n is zero. And if you take the, the interval length from zero to one is length one. If you divide that by 0.1, you're going to get 10. So you're going to have 10 um, sub intervals. So n will go from one to 10. We start at zero and then you go to 10. Okay, so now this is going to be the previous value plus the 0.1, which is B2. No, which is B1, oops. So I'll draw that down. So it's x values goes from zero to one. That, you make sure it goes from zero to one. And the one is the what you're trying to estimate. Okay, here, here's where we apply the Euler's method. It's gonna be the previous value plus this B1 with which with this uh, point 0.1, the h times f of the other stuff. Now remember f was three x squared, so that's three times b three squared, which is the previous x minus three x squared y. So that's three times b three squared times. Uh, C three times y. Okay. Okay, so this represents three x squared y minus three x squared y. And then you just um, double click or drag it down, and we have two point nine six three nine seven. So that's going to be two point nine six four. Okay, so 2.964 will be the answer to the first to uh, the second part of part A. 2.964. Okay, now it says to use a step size of 0 0.01. So I put everything in, and here I want to increase it by. That's B17 plus B, I put a dollar sign to fix it there, 15, like that. And then here, hmm. now if I just go here and drag it down, then it's just gonna put five, which is, blah. but if I get a few of these and then drag it down, then it, sees, oh, we're supposed to follow a pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna come down to here to about 100 of them, because I think that's gonna take 100 or something. I need to go more. There we go. Delete those. It's gonna take 100 of these. Okay, now, as long as I have that filled in, then I can just go here and double, double tap it and it filled in all the X's. There we go, it filled in all the X's, okay. So isn't this great? We're getting, we're making the computer do a lot of work. Yeah. This is the funnest part, man. Making the computer do lots of work. Okay, so while we, while we just sit back and relax, look at that, we made it do the works. Okay, so Euler's method, so it's the previous, um value which is uh c17 which is the previous slot here plus and then we have h times the other stuff so h is what b15 fix that there times three i guess three x squared so three times uh what is it b17 squared minus 
3 times B17 squared times C17. Okay, so 3x squared minus 3x squared y is that. And then the computer is going to do lots of work when we double tap that. And then we get to just scroll down. And um, then, let's see, 2.8506. Looks like the answer to the second part, to the third part, I mean, where we're using step size uh, 0 0.01. Okay, and then we have the third one, the uh, fourth part, which is 0 0.001, which is like, what are they doing, making us do that for? Okay, so, but anyways, 0 0.001, we'll do it. That means a thousand steps, by the way. So N, X, N, and Y, N. Let me know it starts at zero. Um, zero, one. No, it's six. Okay, so y of zero was uh, six. Okay. And then this goes one, two, we're gonna have to go to a thousand of these. So this is like, uh, and make sure it's going okay. Okay, so let's go to like a thousand. Well, that's going pretty quick. Oh good, we, we overshot it by quite a bit. That's cool. Okay. Okay, so this one is uh, B121 plus B119. Uh, Put the, again, the number sign fixes on that one. There we go. Okay, now, oh man, the computer is gonna do so much work this time. If we, if we do this right, so C121 plus, um, H, which is B119 times, okay, then it's three, three X squared or three B121 squared minus three, three X squared Y, so that's three times B121 squared times C121, that's Y. Let me get there, double tap that. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here. And the answer to the third part is 3.8405. Hmm. Yeah, 3. Point, no, 2.8405. Of course, I'll post this up on on Canvas afterwards. Um, let me let's go back and put all the answers in that we got. So after rounding off, this one was two point nine six four. This one was two point eight. 506 and this one was 2.8405. Okay, so after we've done all that work, guess what? They pull on us. They say, oh, this is the exact solution right here. What if why didn't you tell us before we had the computer? Well, it was okay. The computer did all the work. We didn't. We just kind of just watched the computer do work. So I guess that's okay. Um, but this is the the. But they're saying, oh, verify that this is the exact solution of the differential equation. Okay. Um. So y equals one plus five e to the negative x cubed. Okay. So if you take the derivative here. 
you're going to get a negative, wait, the derivative of this coming down, which would be negative three X squared, right? So that's gonna be negative 15 e to the negative X cubed. Wait, there's an X squared in there. The negative 15 X squared e to the negative X cubed, okay? That's what happens when you take the derivative. The derivative of the one is zero and the derivative of this part is this. Okay, so now the left-hand side, which is, this is the left-hand side, y prime plus three x squared y is equal to this right here that we just took the derivative of. Plus three x squared times this, y. So you get three x squared y, so we replace this y with this. So that's negative 15 x squared e to the negative x cubed, which is what we have here, plus, what's this, is this is three x squared. If you distribute the three x squared in, you get three x squared, and then you distribute to here, you get 15 x squared. And a wonderful thing happens, this and this, cancel, okay, and then you end up with three X squared. This is a good kind of cancel, not the kind of the other kind of cancel that's going on these days. Okay, um, so, so that's pretty much verifies it. And then, okay, you also need um, to verify this piece here though. So that, that verifies, what we just did here, verifies this part right here, this, this works. But we also need to verify this y of zero equals six. So if you have, if you put a zero into here, if you put a zero in there for x, you're going to get one plus five, which is uh, one plus five e to the negative zero, which is one plus five, which is six. Okay, so there's that. Okay, finally, part B. I mean, part C, find the errors in using Euler's method to compute y of one with the step sizes. So now, now that we know that the actual solution is this, then we know if we put a one, if we put a, I'm sorry, if you put a, if you put a one in, you're going to get one plus five e to the negative one, which is one plus five over e. And we can just plug that into a calculator and it gives you 2.8394. Okay, now um, here it appears that they have absolute value signs, but that's not, they're not though. Don't be fooled, those not absolute value signs. So the error is the exact value minus the approximate value. So for h, h equals one, okay, so h equals one was this one. Our exact value is still approximately that. Our approximate value is six. Okay, so if you calculate that, you get approximately negative three point one six oh six for the first one. Okay, for the second one, here's our estimate here. Again, you, you use the exact value, subtract two point nine six four from it and that's negative point one two four six. Okay, and you do the same thing for the other two. So this two point eight three nine four minus this one is negative point zero one one two and the two point eight three nine four minus two point eight four zero five is approximately point um, zero zero one one point zero zero one one. 
Okay, so what happens on the error to the error when the step size is divided by 10? So here you're dividing the step size by 10 as you go from here to here and is here to so here to here and here to here and here to here. Each of those is dividing the step size by 10. When the step size is divided by 10, the error estimate is divided is also is also divided by 10. Okay, because you can kind of see that this point zero one one two or point one two four six that's like that's kind of close to point one one sort of. If you divide that by ten, you get this. If you divide that by ten, you get this. Really close, not exactly. This is just like sort of what happens approximately. Yeah, there was that's the word approximately. 